last video, I kind of casually compared several coolers that I get asked questions about for the S4 Mini. But after I got done comparing them, of course one of my customers let me know that there was another cooler I needed to buy. This is the ID Cooling VC45. And this is kind of a unique cooler, even though it looks very much like the Noctua NH-L9i, because it features a vapor chamber built in. So what's it like? Let's go find out. Oh, oh, oh one, one thing, one thing. So the last video, I purposely chose a CPU that's too hot for the S4 Mini. The second thing, which is really important, is that I was using version 28.9, a Prime 95, which is what I use for all of my stress testing CPUs. But what it does do very well is generate a lot of heat, which is why I used it to compare these coolers. I want to thank Dr. Zaber from the Century Project for asking me to clarify this if I did any more future heat testing videos. And I'm also going to use version 26.6 of Prime 95 and this current benchmark to show you a more accurate stress test that is safe for the CPU, at least more safe. So with this disclaimer out of the way, let's go blow up my CPU. Your job is to stop it from blowing up. Presentation is, um, well, it's packed well. Not much for presentation. It comes with everything that you need to actually cool your CPU down, which is, in the end, what you pay for. Also, some weird plastic fibers. Box is kind of boring, but then again, so are my S4 mini boxes, and who really cares? It's about the coolers. Do any tests, I'm gonna have to remove the Noctua from my current test motherboard, which is super easy. Four thumb screws, that's all there is to it. So the VC45 does come with a thermal interfacing compound, but I'm not gonna use it because I wanna be consistent with my heatsink tests. So I'm using Noctua's NTH1, which is what I use in all my builds. It's good stuff. It works really well. I put a piece size amount. This is what it looks like. This is the piece size amount. The mating surface of the VC45 is awful as far as finish. I mean, it's one of the roughest surfaces I've seen in a cooler. I don't think it matters too much, but if you were expecting something lapped and polished, it's just, it's not here. The VC45 does have adjustable mounting system, which is really nice because you can install it on more than one type of motherboard but it does make it a little trickier to install. You could definitely over tighten it though, so make sure you don't warp your motherboard and just tighten it as much as it needs to be, but not anymore. Installing the clips for the fan was really difficult. I mean, I had to look at the instructions, that's how bad it was. And the instructions actually showed a different style clip, so I was even more confused. But at the end of the day, I finally figured it out and broke in the fan clips. And I didn't shoot my eye out, so there's that. It's all bolted up and ready for some testing. Okay, round one's pretty boring. Stock voltages, stock clock rate. Noctua is a little bit cooler, just a little bit. Running version 26.6, Prime 95. And yeah, the Noctua is actually, during this cycle, cooling a little bit more CPU. So I guess the winner would be the Noctua, but still too boring of a test. So I overclocked the processor to 4.5 gigahertz. This is of course the VC45 and I'm running the hot version of Prime 95, the deadly version. And yeah, it um, was pretty hot. It eventually did throttle like after 10 minutes. So I put it back down on the 26.6 version with an overclocked CPU and it throttled, but after like 15 minutes. So I guess, well, obviously this CPU is not for overclocking. So here's the thing about the VC45. It's, it's pretty loud. It's louder than the Noctua, but listen for yourself. And let's test it against the Noctua fan. And I'm gonna need a beer to wrangle off this clip. Okay, so I have the Noctua fan on the VC45. Let's see what she does. About the same, actually. I was actually surprised to not see much of a difference, except for noise. It's a lot quieter.
And I made good contact with the VC45, so I know that wasn't the issue, both on the CPU and the backside. Done a couple runs, but here's the last one. It's a confirmation run, stock voltages, and looks like the Noctua is a little bit cooler still, by just a teeny tiny bit. But it is quieter, so I think it has to do with the fan because the heatsink design is pretty similar. The Noctua has more fins and a heat pipe, but I guess that offsets any advantage that the vapor chamber has on the VC45. Well, that was um, pretty close, almost too close to call for talking about just the temperature data, but that's only if we're looking at the raw temperatures. So there's a lot of things about this cooler that I just don't think holds up to the NHL9i. So is this a bad cooler? Absolutely not. I just can't dethrone the king. But maybe with an update and some heat pipes, it could. Or with a much lower price tag, I would definitely be tempted to go with this cooler. But because, at least in America, it's more expensive than the Noctua, it's noisier than the Noctua, it's not as pretty as the Noctua, I would have to go with the Noctua. Thanks for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up or a hate comment if you hated it. And frankly, I probably deserved it for being negative about a product on the internet. <laughs> Whatever you do, hope to see you next time.